Years to the time, thing, like, hey, like it makes sense. Like Anthony's super productive. Good morning. I'd like to call the file uh, delivered. Ladies, gentlemen, please. Okay. I'd like to call the uh, regular scheduled meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order. That is now 831. The first order of business uh, would be to addition to agenda under uh, use or signs on the green. I propose we put it on the item 8.8. .8. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I neglected to say it's Wednesday, September 4th, 2013. First order of business is a public forum limited to three minutes regarding any agenda item. Anybody wish to address the board? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on. Item two, approval of the minutes of August 19th, 2013, which was a regular meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion made. Second. Any additions or corrections? Comments? See none. I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Tracy, I abstain. abstain. I was absent. Okay, thank you. Item three, Police Chief Thomas Terrible, 3.1. Discuss and take possible action to purchase four 2014 police vehicles through state bid 12 PSX 0194 from Venda MHQ. Good morning, Jeff. Good, Good morning. morning. How are you? Uh, well, before you ask you, last uh, budget process for this fiscal year, we were uh, approved for replacement of four uh, vehicles for the police department, three for patrol, and one for administration. Um, when we came before you last year, we were asking to purchase new vehicles, new models, and that sort of thing. So with that, I'm happy to report we do have two of the vehicles in service now, and I'll let the deputy cover, but there's a, a quite a bit of savings on the gas uh, fuel um, on the miles per gallon. So with that, I'll let him discuss that with you. Okay. Good, morning. Good, morning. Uh, Good morning. So with regard to the, the fuel savings, I'm going to pass around a report. I apologize I didn't send it in advance, but it's a it's a brief one. I'll, I'll pass it around. But it was a report I generated in June to the chief, which calculated the first six months of use of the vehicles. Um, increase in efficiency on miles per gallon over the Ford Crown Victorias was 4.1, which is equivalent to a 41.8% uh, increase in efficiency on, on fuel savings. So I'll pass it around if, you, if you'd like to read that. Um, so moving forward, as the chief said, uh, the, the vehicles have worked out great for us. Um, they store all the equipment we want. They've increased the efficiency. Um, they've operated in conditions that the Crown Victorias would have difficulty operating in. And so our intention is to continue uh, replacing the Crown Victoria fleet with these um, utility interceptors, they call them, uh, which is basically the plat uh, a Ford Explorer platform. Um, I'm sure most of you have seen those driving around. Uh, so our uh, request this morning is to purchase four new vehicles, as the chief said, three for patrol, one for administrative, off a uh, state bid from a vendor called MHQ. Uh, we've received pricing from MHQ in advance of this request and submitted those costs to you. Uh, the cost for replacement uh, of those vehicles is within the budget that we requested. Um, actually, we're a little, we're about $139 over, so we're going to take that out of motor vehicle maintenance, as mm -hmm. you can see from the numbers we gave you. So it's pretty close, considering um, it's a new uh, it's a new year and the costs uh, put in were anticipated to go up just a little bit. So, uh, any questions you have on on the vehicles or the purchase or the equipment, I'd be happy to answer those. The uh, vehicles that you're replacing, what are the miles on currently? Um, excellent question. Um, they're all over. They're all close over. Close to 100,000. Yeah. All four? or One of them is under 100,000, and I believe someone in the town is going to want that one. It's a 2002 yeah. uh, Explorer. Right. So it's got, we've got 11 years on the vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I believe it's in the 80,000 mark. And then, <coughs> and then three are, are approaching 100 or are over 100? Correct. Right. Yes. What does MHQ mean? Um, what, is that the state bid list or something? Yeah. yeah. For police vehicles? Yeah. It's a company that operates out of Middletown for their for their outfitting. Um, I, don't know. I, don't know. I don't know. They don't say. <laughs> it's MHQ. I love the, the anacronyms. Municipal headquarters. I don't, I don't know. Something. <laughs> so I love the anacronyms. Yeah. Um, but they won the state bid. Uh, so they won the state bid for the state police cruisers. Um, as you can see, a lot of people are, a lot of agencies are moving over to this utility yep. interceptor. 
Um, they spec'd out specifics for a, a state cruiser, which isn't exact to ours, but within their, uh, within their bid, we can uh, use different vendors to uh, outfit the cars the way we have ours outfitted, so that's well within the bid specifications, and we've spec'd those out to match exactly the vehicles we, we built last year. Uh, What's the delivery time on this? Um, it'll, they're real busy right now in 2014, and since they got the state bid, it's probably going to take longer than, than the vendor did for last year. Um, they're telling us once the vehicles are received, it's a, a three-week turnaround for outfitting them. Uh, it's a pretty big company, and they, they uh, run, a, run a pretty tight ship there. So they're, once they get them in, they don't want them there for very long, so they're going to turn it around pretty quickly. Uh, as far as the delivery in the car, six to eight weeks usually on building them. Normally, if we order them this time, uh, by the time we get done with the purchase orders and stuff, usually we get them mid-December, bringing to January. By the time we get them outfitted, it's February, March before we get them on the road. Okay. Now, the, the equipment, uh, $7,381 per vehicle. Uh, is that part of the bid, or is that the equipment cost that we're going to have to put in here? Uh, that, that's public. all part of the bid. So they're going to install all the equipment? Install it all, okay. provide, uh, supply all right. it all, and install it all, right? Okay. I assume you have a program for rotating or cars or whatever. Is that based on time or mileage or combination? It's, patrol is mileage. Normally we, we keep them three years. By the time we're done with the three years, they're roughly 100,000 miles on them. The yeah, minute trade of cars. You use, I, would see, I would think that 100 isn't you know, the end of the world anymore. I mean, well, it is where they, because they still have engine wear, you still have idle time, which is really what's killing the engines, is the amount of time that they're idling, because you can't shut them down. No, it's just not, yeah. yeah. It's, not so it's just miles. not miles in, they're tough miles when you get done with them. Oh, I understand you know, all that, it just seems like, uh, you know, cars used to be worn out at 100,000 right. miles, and I can appreciate cruisers get above average wear, but... 100,000 miles, you know, cars seem to be lasting longer, and I don't know if you've got that type of thing. Well, we have a history. If we start letting them go over 100,000 miles in patrol, that's when we see the transmission failures, and we start seeing the Maybe engine failures. Yeah. 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 Right, and then that was, that's the expensive stuff. So if we get rid of them before the 100,000, then we really don't have those those issues. Plus the other issue is, I mean, we, we've been down that road before where we exceeded the hundred stretch it a little bit. Stretch it, and we we paid we in the paid end <laughs> in maintenance. And plus, don't forget that these vehicles, if they're not traded in, they're handed down, literally, mm -hmm. to other departments whose vehicles are starting to cost us more in maintenance. Right, they're already asking for them, or the farm heads are already saying, well, "What do you got for cars this year?" So we can. What we're planning to do is the current supervisor vehicle. Uh, as you know, for years we've been taking that vehicle and using it for hurricanes and the four-wheel drive. Well, the two that we kept nursing just totally died. We just wore them out. There's just, uh, we're just not going to put any money into them. So we're going to keep that one supervisor vehicle and put it into that road job four-wheel drive vehicle. It replaces the other two that we've lost. So. That, we, that we've lost. And we just... The town got the money out of them. They just, we just wore them down to nothing. So. Well, I want to say, you know, I was skeptical about these, so I'm glad you did your homework, and I appreciate you coming forward with the fuel efficiencies. That's um, very helpful because obviously that was a question I that I had and had other people had. had. about explorers being cruisers. Yeah. Right. I think I you still more, need to do this. I think it was more of a, if I remember the discussion a year ago, it was more of the perception. And I didn't get any questions. And, I don't know if you You know, I, I get calls on a lot of things. Yeah. But I didn't get a call on why are we giving the police cruises, uh, why are we using explorers for police cruises. And I did. That's why. Mm -hmm. right. These yeah. aren't really That's the old explorers. They're, explorer. no. they're, no. they're a police package. As you see them, they're lowered to the ground. It, and it, they're like rebuilt. You see more and more right. departments, you know, you travel around the northeast especially. and. Uh, there's more and more and more of them. Well, the Tauruses, you just can't get prisoners in the back of them. They're very difficult to get in. The same with the Dodge Chargers and stuff. We've had a lot of rest lately, so I think we need to... You can't... Yeah. Even they're tough. To, I mean, you know, Charlie's not a huge deal, but they'll be tough to get Charlie. Get Gary in. Forget it. We're... Get we're all yeah. Yeah. <laughs> get back in the Chargers, so if I want to commit a crime, you can't take me in, Tom. Gary's going on the hood as a dead deer. But this is good, because this, you know, really, you know, like Cindy said, we all had misgivings, and this just Reconfirms that we made the right decision. We appreciate your effort. And, and Charlie, you and I keep going back and forth to New Hampshire. I know it's the Massachusetts oh, yeah. State yeah. Police. Um, 
I didn't see um, a Crown Vic. They're all, uh, they appear to have pretty much made the transition mm -hmm. to uh, the Explorers. Ford did their homework. They knew what they were mm -hmm. doing. They spent a lot of years designing it and building it, purpose building it. So I think it's, it's shown that it's been successful. So I think this is a prime example of where you put the dollars where they give you the most benefit. And in this case, you're getting better vehicles, more efficient vehicles, and you're cutting down on your maintenance costs. I, I right. think that, and it goes, I guess, the, the end results we saw in our uh, surplus at the end of June, which was a pretty good surplus, and right. the police department contributed uh, a lot yeah. to that. And this is one of the items that helped. And they did their homework in convincing yeah. us that this was the way to go, and it worked. Great. Well, and, and nobody's mentioned it, but it, these usually fall back to Town Hall South and some of those other departments yeah. who can probably better use an Explorer than a, than a Crown Vic because they're carrying that's stuff true. in the back. Yeah. So it'll we'll ultimately pay off for those guys. In two or three years, they can have them. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> when, but when they get them, it'll, be a, it'll ultimately be a better vehicle for them and right. for their use. Right. No okay. doubt. Okay. Okay, we award that. Terrific. <laughs> All right, do I have a motion to approve this? I uh, move that we award state bid 12 PSX0194 from vendor MHQ for four 2014 police vehicles in the amount of $131,069.53. Second. Second. Any discussion on the motion? So I didn't vote for last time, but I'll vote for it now. Okay. Good. Such your homework. <laughs> Any other further discussion? We'll see. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. Thanks gentlemen. Item four, consider and take possible action on an application for a variance from the noise control ordinance for the Guilford Agricultural Society for the Guilford Fair. Do you have anybody from the uh, Ag Society here? No? Pam, you just want to pinch it for this? We'll get you a free ticket or something. Like that. I do this every year, don't you? No, no, we have no. it. This is brand new. This is brand new. Yeah. Brand new. That's what happened when you have a morning. Good morning. Good morning. So under our town code, uh, chapter 208, um, in, uh, the Ag Society is required to get a variance from the no noise ordinance. And so that is what is before you today. Uh, and they have submitted paperwork to the that apparently is in your um, yeah. packets. Yeah, the, the dates are... Uh, and provide you with the uh, information that, that's required yeah. under the ordinance, the is location. This a Did they have of, complaints? Yeah. Is this a result of their, you know, just becoming aware of the ordinance, or is it complaints? Uh, I, I did not know the answer to that. Chief, no, Chief wants to say something. I don't know if they did it last year, but they've been doing it since we... Since the ordinance was passed, oh, they have? Uh, okay. I don't, maybe they missed it last year, but it, since that was passed, they have been providing this because uh, the ordinance does require them to get a variant or to have, get your permission to. Right. So there hasn't been a complaint uprising. You didn't hear anything, Joe? Then no, I haven't years. heard anything. Okay. Uh, and as a matter of fact, if you look at the application, the uh, police department, uh, by virtue of the chief's signature, has approved it and uh, then it comes to this board for final approval. They've also notified the property owners, which I appreciate because obviously they're the ones that would complain, but mm -hmm. I, I'm asking, I guess, I don't know if anybody knows the answer, but why September 3rd through the 24th? The fair is only three days. I'm assuming they need, even if it was a week before. Well, it's set up. Maybe it's set, set up. up. Maybe. Uh, yeah, but not but the third. A month? I mean, three weeks? Oh, no. Are they building things? Are they? <laughs> Uh, it says that, uh, it's set up prior, set up of the fair prior to the fair weekend. I, I think it encompasses stuff. more than one week. So. I think they usually start bringing the equipment in now from yeah. their fairgrounds, and maybe that's what they're anticipating the drop off of some of that equipment and making noise beyond the time limit. I mean, uh, we do have the authority to shorten the period. Should you want to do that? Uh, or we can let it stand as requested. No, I'm sure. I just don't know. Yeah. Be curious to know why, right, Veronica? I think yeah. that's what you were pointing out. Well, I mean, if they've notified the property, whole, uh, 
the adjacent property owners, then I'm assuming they notified them of the dates, and if anybody had a concern, they would have let us know. So mm -hmm. I'm, or I'm, I'm fine with letting it stand. I'm just questioning why such a long period of time. We have the uh, Guilford Arts Festival, and that we only give them a week. Right. Yeah. Could we say approve it, Joe, and then have you maybe make or pay I, some further inquiries? I, I just think we could take we could discuss. Well, that. I, but we can't uh, because. You know, yeah. I think it would be very Joey. un Guilford not to do it. I mean, unless they're doing something substantially different, in yeah. which case no we, we will hear some complaints. No, and the problem with tabling is it'll be in the, yeah. almost to the fair. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this is the Guilford Fair. Unless I mean, they call a special meeting for it. So. No. Yeah, no, no, but I, I think it's worth problem. asking a question yeah. as they can respond. And then this way we have it for next year, yeah. too. I'm a little bit disappointed that we didn't have a representative here because they were notified that we would this would be on the agenda. Well, maybe they figured the chief was so, located. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, in my recollection, too, I think this is you want us to get barbers the, the, the first time this has been on our agenda. Yeah, yeah I don't remember seeing it. Okay, I'm, I'm going to uh, suggest that we table, table this for later longer. in the meeting, and we're getting now uh, one of our staff people who happens to be a, a member of the Act Society and actually put the application in. So if you're okay with that, we'll move on and just yep. put this aside. Okay. <clears throat> We'll move, thank you, Pat. Yep. We'll move to item five, discuss and take possible action on a proclamation declaring the month of September 2013 as Leukemia, Lymphoma, and Melanoma Awareness Month. You have the proclamation in front of you. I'm going to get your packet. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Don't forget to sign it before you all, before you all leave. Do you want us to sign that one or the one you have? No, it's just no. folded. This is the okay. copy. She's got the original there. Okay, uh, item six, discuss the town meeting vote on the town purchase of four open space parcels formerly part of Quantapock Hills Condominium by deed in lieu of foreclosure and consider and take possible action on the sale of the two parcels which are not reserved or used for town purposes pursuant to sealed bid procedures set forth in chapter 94 of the town code. Pam, you should have stayed up here. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so this morning at the town meeting, um, the town meeting voted to acquire, as you know, four parcels of open space, uh, four open space parcels in the condominium called Quantapog Hills Condominium. This was uh, a resolution um, of uh, an issue with these parcels that has been with the town for almost 30 years. Or Over more. 30 years. <laughs> uh, and um, to extinguish uh, certain tax issues and to solve certain title problems, um, the town did acquire uh, the four deeds uh, in deed by deed of, in lieu of foreclosure. It was, um, it, we had hired outside counsel and we also worked with Jeff Beatty who represented um, the, some of the associations um, and it was a, a settlement uh, uh, that was determined by several parties. Um, today, at the meeting today, uh, what is before the board is under the town code chapter 94, um, the, the board can elect to uh, sell uh, two of the four parcels um, and by a sealed bid uh, procedure. And so that is what um, is before you today, to decide to sell two of the four parcels for a sealed bid. Um, the parcels will be um, used as open space in perpetuity, um, both the two that we uh, hang, on to. hang on to as mm -hmm. well as the two that um, will be sold by sealed bid. And if you vote to, in fact, uh, sell two of the four parcels, then uh, we will be putting a notice in the newspaper tomorrow, and we will have information on our website, which will give uh, walk you anyone interested in bidding on the properties uh, walk you through the procedure. Okay, I, I think there's a little bit of confusion maybe out there on <clears throat> why we're we're not doing this through a town meeting. Um, when properties it, under our uh, Charter, 
if the properties are reserved or used for town purposes, um, then you you um, use it, but you do it by town meeting. Um, these two we acquired just to solve this title and tax issue. Um, it's not like a school we're about to sell or a town building we're about to sell. Um, so under the town code, chapter 94, it specifically talks about when you sell um, and it's not, sell property is not going to be used or reserved for town purposes. This is the procedure you take. Okay. As opposed to a town meeting. Correct. I just absolutely. And it carves it absolutely out. absolutely clear about absolutely that because clear. I think it's yeah. been drilled into our heads. Any right. land transaction, whether it be a purchase or a sale. Right. Can only happen through a town meeting. And it's it, the and this is the one exception. Yeah, and this is the exception. Okay. Yep. Although it was also clear in the town <clears> meeting <throat> half an hour ago. Which was that our, yeah. <laughs> that our intent was to sell these. Right. 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 So I, if, if anybody had any questions, it took place in the town. Right. The discussion yeah. took place in the right. town meeting. Right. There's also a, you'll see as we go through this process, once you receive the bids, um, you'll, the way this will play out is you'll receive the bids at a town meeting and you'll open up, yeah. uh, not a, a town, town meeting, or a select or selectman meeting. meeting, and you'll open up the bids. Um, and then there's actually a statute which requires a public hearing. Uh, so there'll be more input. Yeah. And, and once we go through those steps, then, uh, will, you know, then we can proceed to close on the, on the sale. So there is a public hearing. There element. is a public okay. hearing element to it. That's by statute. Yeah. And it should be pointed out, there's reason to believe <clears throat> that there will be at least one bidder. Yeah, so there's been, correct. There's been active interest uh, by one bidder, is there any problem? I would just leave that. Just leave it? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll move that we um, approve the sale of the two parcels, which are not reviews or used for town purposes, pursuant to the sealed bid procedure set forth in Chapter 94 of the Town Code. Second. And any discussion? I, I just want to again thank Gary for all his, his work and Pam as well. Sometimes it's hard for people to understand the complications that involve land use issues. Um, and uh, people specialize in that, both <laughs> legally and um, and uh, administratively. So I just the, the time and effort you made, Gary, is appreciated. I know by all of us. But so thank you. I echo those comments. I said in the town meeting that uh, Gary's had several meetings with me on it, and trying to not make my eyes glaze over as he's explaining yeah, right. it to me. Uh, but you did an excellent job. Thank you. Yeah, yeah you keep referring people to call me, Joe. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I got back last night with, with a couple of messages on my phone. I give credit where credit's <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any further discussion? If not, I'll call for a vote. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And thank you again. Yep. I there see. Are people are going to like call you now and tell me you want to sell anything. <laughs> I'm like, call Gary. You started a cottage <laughs> industry for me. No, this is I see Barbara Hamlin's here from the uh, Ag Society. Barb, we had a couple of questions uh, on item four. Four. I was trying to where we are here uh, regarding the variance in uh, re regard to our noise ordinance. The question that I think most of us had uh, was number one, the dates from 9-3, which happens to be yesterday, through the 24th. Um, mainly I'm covering the setup of the fair as well. Right. Because yes. with the tents coming in, with uh, the rides coming in and everything, i just trying to cover all basis for that and the breakdown. OK, so the you are, since that was yesterday, uh, you're starting to receive tents equipment should, now? Tents should start be going up this week um, after North Haven Fair. Um, the, all the uh, rides start rolling in, and they they do start setting some of them up. And that, and plus, uh, our volunteers are actually doing quite a bit of setup set up. Prep okay. and prep down there now. And <laughs> and I guess the other question uh, is that uh, first of all, you did I make a statement. You did notify the abutting property owners and the people in the area, were they notified of the, of the dates too? Um, they weren't notified necessarily of the date. I mean, it's every year we're doing right. the same thing. So I This isn't a change in your historical in your no. schedule no. in any way? No, okay. not at all. Okay. okay. And I'll, I'll move that we approve the uh, request. 
Second. A variance letter. I mean, they're usually pretty cognizant of things, but I just want right. to cover all bases. That's right. all. Uh, and that's, uh, uh, th that's the good way to do it. I mean, I haven't heard any complaints the last couple of years, so I'm fine. I don't guess anybody else has. We must have said it. We have a motion in front of us. No, no further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you for coming up. Thank Appreciate you. it. Uh, item 7, Appointments and Resignations. Uh, act on an appointment of Paula Brackett to the Human Services Council. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Act on a resignation received from Edward Bennett from the Conservation Commission. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Regrets. Act on a resignation received from Gregory Muselli from the Planning and Zoning Commission. So moved. Second. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 With regrets. Act on an appointment of Heather Allure to the Land Acquisition Commission as a member at large. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Act on a recommendation to appoint Light Smith as an alternate to the Youth and Family Service Board for a term to expire September 30th, 2018. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item 7.6, act on a recommendation to appoint June Ann Greeley to the Conservation Commission to fill a vacancy for a term to expire February 28, 2016. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. So Item 8. I know it's not no business, but since we're in conservation, we lost a member of the Conservation Commission and we gained a member of the Conservation Commission. And I know they've had... Yeah, They've had a lot of trouble getting yeah. a quorum. So anybody out there that wants to serve on the Conservation Commission, please volunteer, because they've had to cancel a couple of meetings for lack of a quorum. And their work is very important. And so I was pleased Good to point. see we added somebody, but then Ned had to resign, so we didn't. there's and no net gain. It seems to we have several boards that were in that same category. Yeah. That yes. We keep asking for volunteers. I know it's time-consuming. Uh, uh, and but we, if you have the time and you have the interest, please reach out, volunteer, selectman's office, or if you're with a party, call or uh, get a hold of your particular party chairman. Uh, you, but you can always call the selectman's office or send us an email or a letter or whatever. Uh, I keep saying this: uh, this town would not run as efficiently as it does without all the help from our volunteer boards and commissions. They're a big, big part of running this town. And. and you don't necessarily have to be a member of a party. No, you don't. That's both, both the Republicans and the Democrats appoint unaffiliated to, to slots. That's so. why I say you can come directly to the selectman's yeah. right. office. Okay. Right. Okay. You want to do item eight? Or? Sure. I, I move that we approve the three requests for use of the green and the seven signs sign requests as uh, delineated in section eight of the agenda. Second. Okay, I see some representatives from two of the groups you made your way up here. Do you want to comment on uh, the approvals, or are we just going to head and vote on it? We have one little change to our... Okay, well, come on up. I suppose we should have done it art center separately. <laughs> uh, yeah, and this is item 8.1. 8.1, yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? We had just one minor change talking about setup time. Um, in our original letter, we had a, basically a typo. Um, our request for use of the green setup should be Thursday, July 10th. Not Friday. <clears throat> Not Friday through Thursday, July 24th. That's the only thing. Okay. Do you have that, Trace? Okay. And we'll give you a fresh copy okay. of the letter. In the wrap up, there weren't any issues. No. None at all. This year. And I uh, might you might mention you're doing three days this year. Mm -hmm, Friday, changing. Saturday, and Sunday, Sunday, not doing Thursday. That's right. Uh, and you're gonna oh, start changing. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna start Friday afternoon as opposed right. to Thursday afternoon. Yep. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the weekends are the same hours. Yes. Okay, great. Good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Hope you have cool weather next yeah. year. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question. Um I don't know whether it's related to this application or not. I don't. I don't believe it is, but there was a tent for the um, Shakespeare Camp. I think it was or mm -hmm. Shoreline Arts mm -hmm. Camp. Did that come before us? And it was up a very long time. I mean, it was up 
because of the Arts League, I mean, and then it stayed up through Shakespeare. Yeah, they used it for some, like, I mean, a camp. theater camp. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, the not Arts really Alliance, who's not here tonight, tonight this, uh, this morning. So that's a separate application, the Arts yeah. the, okay. Yeah, okay. And it's, <laughs> it was a couple of nights it rained, so it was a little bit of shelter for some people, yeah. too. Yeah. Okay, any further uh, discussion? I call for a vote. All those in favor? I just Aye. noticed this. Yes, Gary? Folks regarding the Civil War event. Did they want to say anything? Or they just I happy asked them, nobody came up. <laughs> <laughs> don't need to talk but while you're ahead. Sale if you don't have to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if you wanted to plug it. Brian, you can tell he wasn't in the sales. <laughs> no, I didn't know if you wanted to plug it, Brian. Okay. No, but it's one of our signature events. I'll plug it. <laughs> okay. Okay. All those it's in favor. Uh, all right. Thank you all. Okay. Well, all can right. I just ask a question since Gary brought it up? Are you actually going to do a reenactment? Yes, we are. Yeah. Ooh. Yep. Are you going to allow kids to participate in some fashion? Because yeah, we'll, I bet. We'll, we'll come. Okay. All right. Because yep. I can tell you right See? now. Right. You know what? Why don't you wait it. until public comment since we already have a motion and we passed sorry. it. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you. Um, correspondence. Right. Committee reports. Um, I'll, I'll, I don't know if this is appropriate to yeah, have you bring them up. You want to bring it up? Okay. You want to come up and talk about it, but um, several things that I'd like to bring up uh, for the, uh, in relation to the Guilford's 375th celebration is one, people will begin to see the banners going up around uh, the green and Route 1. I'm very excited about that. Uh, we've had a great many uh, local businesses and uh, people stepping up to sponsor uh, our events, and the money is actually going to one of the signature events that Brian's going to talk about here in a minute. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is that our, we're going to have a public launch of our website, which is guildfordct375.org. That should go live uh, September 10th. Right now it's in a soft launch. It's our hope that it's going to be a one-stop shop for everything related to the events surrounding Guilford's 375th. People will be able to purchase merchandise, get information about the events, uh, fundraising information, sponsorship uh, information, uh, a little bit of history. We want it to be interactive. Uh, right now we have uh, something at the library and it's also on our website um, regarding a time capsule. And there's questions about what Guilford, what you think Guilford is going to be like in our 400th birthday, mm -hmm. uh, what we should put in a time capsule. Um, so people have already started giving us their thoughts. Um, the soft launch for the website is so we can work out any kinks, you know, for links and what's working, what's not working. So uh, bear with us through the next couple of weeks while we work through that. But um, very excited, and we're getting uh, ready. Um, you will be seeing shortly, uh, my committee meets Monday night, uh, we're going to make some decisions um, relative to the sale of uh, bracelets for our first kickoff event, which is New Year's Eve. Uh, so it's a family oriented event and there will be some information about uh, bracelets and how to get into some of the um, events that are going on around uh, the downtown area, the churches, the, the the green and so forth. So look for all that, and uh, we're we're coming up on two, 2014. Up yeah. Thank you. Yep. I'm glad for that uh, we decided to do 375. I don't know how many of us will be around for another 25 years. <laughs> so, uh, the original committee of 350. Wanted to wait for 400. Um, if you yeah. remember. No, uh, I don't think so. Yeah. So. You had a question? Um, yeah, the New Year's Eve, Eve event is, from what I understand, because you talked about before, there's going to be events like earlier in the evening and then later in the evening, so people have younger children. Yep, noon okay, to, that's noon to 8 p.m. That's okay. Yeah. It's really more the day. Actually, more the, the day. day. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. no, that's good. Yeah. Okay. okay. Brian, you want to tell us about your Civil War reenactment? Okay, well, I'm, I'm here speaking on behalf of our chairperson, Edie Brown, who well, preferred to have me up here in front of the crowd, but um, we are excited about this event. Um, if you, there's, as we were planning it, there's a lot of different periods in Guilford history that could be picked on uh, and used, embellished, and we decided on the Civil War because of Guilford, a, a significant role Guilford had. Uh, we lost Guilford residents in that Civil War, and the monument on the green is a testament to that. So we uh, picked that theme. To that end, we are going to have a reenactment. We're anticipating about 30 reenactors. So they'll be marching, they'll be cooking, there'll be drills. 
Um, they're going to have a fashion show of what women wore in those days. Uh, there's a surgeon going to be around to explain how they operated in the field and things like that. So we really want to have a lot of educational aspects of it. Um, Cindy, I don't know at this point, I don't know if we have who all the reenactors will be, if there will be younger folks as part of the reenactment group or not. This is a volunteer group and they kind of fluctuate a little okay. bit depending on the events. So they couldn't commit exactly yeah. the number and the who, but those predominant speakers, uh, 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 positions. And then we accept, uh, expect probably an Abe Lincoln will be walking around meeting with the kids and, and a few other important, uh, Harriet Beecher Stowe and a few other important characters in the history. So the whole idea is to have it an active, interactive, where children, people, anybody can go up and talk to the reenactors, listen to them, and understand what was going on and how things went. Um, so it is eff effectively an all-day event, 11 o'clock in the morning. They'll be set up and ready to go. Um, and then as the day goes on, we have a concert planned at 7 o'clock. Um, many of you know uh, William Boughton, the director of New Haven Symphony, is a Guilford resident, and he's volunteered uh, to put together a musical show, again, with the mis music from the period and the history. And he's been assembling uh, historical letters from many of the soldiers who wrote back here to, um, to their families. Uh, he's working with Joel Heenlander and Carl Balistrasi and a host of other historians in town. Um, so he's going to be integrating some reading of the letters in the music so, again, people can understand and hear and better uh, understand how everybody felt and acted. And then we have, in parallel with the concert, there will be this light show where we're taking a lot of the images, the historical images, and we intend, I'm told that they can be displayed even in the trees or maybe on the side of town hall building or possibly the church. So. Um, that'll be a little bit uh, kind of entertaining in itself. Um, so the whole thing is to try to be as involved, get the community involved, uh, different groups. I mean, for example, Dudley Farm is going to set up a typical farmer's market, and we're extending out to other groups like that. The churches around the green, we're asking for their participation. Uh, the reenactors ask to stay overnight. Uh, to make it more authentic and then the next morning we're working with one of the churches at a minimum of one of the churches uh, uh, and or an ecumenical service and I say that right on the green uh, they felt that just adding in um, that part of it would to kind of close the event on Sunday morning um, so I mean I think it will be a fun informative educational uh, we are spreading the word on volunteers and yeah i was just going to say that yeah, what, yeah, a, a, an event to. of this magnitude <clears throat> yeah. needs a lot of help uh so if people have time whether it's small or large blocks of time uh i i really am pleading with people to reach out to us because uh edie and brian can use all the help that they can get for this particular event it is a large yeah. undertaking so. And, and also, I would remind people that we'll always accept contributions yes. to, yeah. to help fund all this. Yeah. Uh, what's the dates of this, Brian? May 31st, 2014, and June 1st, that'll be the Sunday. So May 31st is Saturday. That happens to be the weekend after Memorial uh -huh. Day in May of 2014. I just think it's a great event for the kids, you know, like having a son who's very fascinated with history and... War. I mean, we are doing 11, a lot of work so, with the schools yeah, too. Yeah, I mean, that's, to I know it's something the that into all, yeah. all the things that we're doing. Yeah, really yeah that, that's a. I mean, that's a good point. We we've, we've been talking with the schools on this event and others to see how. I should have mentioned the musicians. While there will be a few professional musicians, the majority of the musicians will be out of our local schools and or senior group. Yeah. So again, we're trying to use local people. Yeah. There's a few specialists I think uh, Bill wants to integrate, yeah. but the majority will be volunteers and community people. And the, um, not related to this event, but I think I neglected to say, but it's important, is that um, all there are so many, um, like such as the library, local groups, um, are already incorporating the theme of 375, which is part of the committee's um, mission, was to reach out to the community and have them incorporate 
this theme into what they're doing. The library's lecture series next year is going to be, you know, related to 375. Uh, the Guilford Poets Society is doing work related to that. We have um, some uh, artisans up on Westwoods Plaza that um, are uh, putting together a, um, a selection of art uh, pieces uh, around 375. We have a restaurant down on Route 1 and it's French and I can't pronounce it, La Rotisseria. R Really, I'm not giving this really, report. <laughs> yeah, but they their whole menu is uh, around 375 Guilford events and yeah, stuff. Yeah, sandwiches. So, uh, they came up sandwiches, with them, like, you know, specialty so sandwiches. All of that is terrific. That's exactly what we wanted to happen, um, and we just want it to be a wide community celebration of Guilford. Yeah, great, good. Hey, if I can, I mean, maybe to plug um, the sponsorship again because yeah. we are raising money to fund all of this. And we've had uh, five diamond level sponsors come forward Pages Hardware, Bishops, Gilbert Guilford Savings, Savings Bank, East River, East River Energy, Yale New Haven. And Yale New Haven Hospital have come forward at the diamond level. And we've had numerous others. It would be hard to list all of them. Um, uh, now we have the banner starting to show up in town. There's an opportunity there for a standalone banner uh, sponsorship that's uh, $600. We have the commemorative book that we're putting together. Yeah, and that's important because uh, uh, there is an opportunity for just regular folks to become a patron, you know, sort of like they do in the yearbook for $25. You could wish you could put something in our book, uh, a business card, um, and even have the opportunity to write a story, how you came to Guilford, what brought you to Guilford, uh, your connection to Guilford. Uh, any stories that, that are interesting, that, that group is also looking for uh, input. But I, it, it, uh, to that point, I mean, we did a mass mailing to everybody in town. But I, you know, I'm not sure if everybody got it, read it, maybe thought it was junk mail. Uh, we will have an opportunity on the website to link and put sponsorship together. Um, frankly, we're reaching out to businesses uh, and, and asking. Um, but we're doing everything we can to get exposure. I think at this point there's still been a little bit limited awareness of what, or maybe people are still thinking, oh, it's 2014. Yeah. Well, in the case of the commemorative book, our goal was to have that printed by December so that it could be distributed at the New Year's Eve event, and then it would have a listing of everything going forward in 2014. So really the time frame is the next 30, 60 <coughs> days type of thing. It's being assembled right now. The banners, uh, our goal was to have the banners up for the benefit of the sponsor for about 18 months. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, again, they're starting to go up right now, uh, but we wanted to try to have about the fourth quarter of 2013, all of 14, 14. into early 15. So for the sponsor's benefit we're trying to get them up for 18 months um, so again as soon as people can react uh, their sponsorship information here there will be online once we go live uh, with the website if you're looking for information on the sponsorships just contact the selectman's office they have the application they'd be more than happy to get it out to folks and again our website is going live it's www.guilfordct375.org Great. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. How's Thank that for you. a commercial break? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent report. Excellent. I was, uh, <clears throat> I participated in uh, Clinton's 350th anniversary parade on Saturday. I was invited with the other surrounding selectmen, first selectmen, I should say, and uh, some of our uh, state reps and uh, uh, congressional reps were there with uh, so quite a crowd. So, um, Congratulations to Clinton on 350, but we're a little bit older, so <laughs> we look forward to them being here next year. Any other committee reports? Yeah. Oh, I was at yes. economic development last night. Yeah. Uh, you know, the good news is, you know, things like Hokan Gas and the Trail Blazers building are uh, moving along, and those are good facelifts that are, that are happening. The, the other news is that the bigger projects are still stymied with the economy mm -hmm. and. Uh, but things are moving. I don't know whether it's because of the weather or not, but all of a sudden the building pace seems to have picked up, so that's good. Well, that 
Yeah, and you can see it from the reports that we get monthly, the building officials report. Uh, yeah. He went way over his uh, budget on revenue for last year, which is good. It's the big projects that are stymied. And it's going to be for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Any other committee reports? Old uh, business, do we have any? No. Uh, new business, I have two pieces of new business. Uh, I'll be very brief. Um, <clears throat> The, the town of Guilford belongs to Region 2 of uh, DEMIS, which is Department of Homeland Security and uh, People Protection, which is a state agency. And uh, Region 2 was awarded a grant uh, for emergency management software. So every town in this region has it. We have it now. Um, I was introduced to it at our council of governments meeting last week and we had a training session with emergency service personnel yesterday um, at the fire headquarters which got into detail it's a fantastic exciting piece of software which will enable and brian was there too as a communications person uh, enable for all our department heads uh, whether they're in the eoc or not to communicate with all the with the team, uh, we used to have these whiteboards in the fire headquarters, and we've gone through too many of them now, listing all the problems, all the areas, all the roadblocks. That's all going to be done by interactive by computer now. Um, it's an ongoing development of the system. Uh, the system was tested and used by the city of New Haven uh, during um, Sandy, and it worked extremely well. It's very easy to use. Uh, so uh, I'm excited about it. I hope we don't have to use it. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> that, that's that's the end. Of it. I hope we don't have to use it. But I have a lot of confidence in it, and our emergency service chiefs are, are very uh, excited about it. Uh, for instance, if a patrolman comes across a, a tree down uh, and wires around it, road blockage, whatever, uh, just has to send a text from his iPhone. It goes right into the system, and we see it on the EOC immediately. And then uh, so would CLMP see it. Uh, so it's, it's really good. Like I said, we're we want to get prepared for it, but we don't want to have to use it. Okay. The second piece, and the, the name of it, I'm going to botch this up. It's uh, Viochi. First, I thought it was an Italian restaurant, but it's <laughs> not. <laughs> you can't be any worse than I botched the French restaurant. So uh, it's an acronym for whatever. But uh, it, it's, a, it's a nice piece of software. You agree, Brian? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Good. The second piece, an update on our Everbridge uh, mass communication system. And the reason I say mass rather than emergency is because we can use it for both emergency and non-emergency notifications. Uh, we'll be up and running very, very shortly. We've got a training session on it uh, this week. Um, and we will very shortly be reaching out to our citizens uh, to sign up, to sign up to be notified. Now, you can be notified. Uh, either by iPhone, I've got my iPad here, your PC, or your landlines. But you, you're going to have to sign up. Now, again, uh, this primary reason is for emergency notification. But uh, if there's a non-emergency uh, notice we want to get out and uh, we can't use a reverse 911 for, we can do it through the new Everbridge system. And give an example, when we had to postpone the fireworks, uh, last, well, well that's probably July, from a Saturday to a Sunday, we tried to put it on the website, and we did. We put it on Facebook, and we felt it still wasn't enough. But if you're part of the Everbridge system and you've signed up for it, you would have got a text or a notification, which you then have to just say, yeah, I received it, and we know you got it, notifying you that the fireworks would be moved. So it's a great, it's a great tool. Again, it, it's something that... Uh, uh, we wanted to uh, have in our arsenal of, of communication something we learned from the last couple of storms where we had, uh, I think, uh, some disappointments on not being able to communicate with people on a timely fashion. The current Everbridge system we have now will take about eight hours to get to every household in town, and that's obviously not <coughs> efficient. This is instantaneous. So that will go up in a couple of weeks. The reason I'm saying all this now is to please uh, look out for our notices that are going to come out on website, Facebook, to sign up for this. Uh, we will have a Facebook, uh, we have a link on our website 
to the sign-up page. And uh, Sandy Roloff from the library has, is right here, has offered to enlist her staff and help getting people registered. And so is the police department. They're going to have their new command vehicle uh, at the fair and show you how to sign up there too. So, okay, that's the two pieces I have right now. Uh, yeah. So, just but is that something you might use two numbers, both your home number and your mobile number? You can number? sign up as many numbers as you want. Oh, only because if you know, if you're out of power, your your right. mobile might not work, but your landline nice might work. Yeah. I've signed up, and they took okay. me through it. Okay, uh, you can sign up whatever device you want, or as many devices as okay. you want. And I would encourage each member of your family to sign up separately, because you all have cell phones. Right. And you all have probably different computers. My chair's one, but I think most households have more than one computer or laptop. Okay. That's all I have. Anything else? Great. Uh, public forum, limited to three minutes on any issue. Seeing no one, we'll move on. Item 14, uh, discussion of labor issues and executive session will be required. I'd like to uh, invite the Human Resources uh, Director and Director of our library, Sandy Ruloff. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Mike, we will not be coming back for a vote. Okay. Thank you all.